The platformer has never been my go-to genre. I tried your new Super Mario Bros games, found them uninspiring on every level. Even going back to earlier platformers never held my interest. Until I played Donkey Kong Country, I was taken aback by the luscious environments, momentum-based movement, and that outstanding soundtrack. Yet there were a few nagging things that really held it back from being what I'd consider a masterpiece. It's time to see if the sequel can hold up to the quality of the first, or even better, exceed my expectations, becoming something truly special. Welcome to the show where I look at games I didn't grow up with to determine if they still hold up today. Welcome to No Nostalgia. Donkey Kong is one of the most recognisable characters in gaming history. I don't think it would have been hard to whack DK in some brand new levels and call it a day. However, subverting everyone's expectations, King K. Rool, now calling himself Captain K. Rool, acquired himself some booty, and I'm not talking about treasure. DK has been captured, so it's up to Diddy Kong to step up, rescue his friend, and prove his worth as a true hero. Putting the sidekick as the main protagonist for this journey was a bold choice. Hell, it would take seven more years to do the same thing with Mario. However, Diddy Kong does have his own sidekick of sorts, his girlfriend, Dixie. Diddy Kong is identical to how he played in the prior game, which to be honest, is fine by me. In DKC1, Donkey Kong's only advantage was that he could take down stronger enemies. Other than that, he was slower than Diddy, had a bigger hitbox, being more prone to taking damage, so I might as well just play as Diddy Kong whenever I can, right? Diversely, Dixie Kong has got this hair spin thing to glide across the levels, which would seem broken if it wasn't supplemented by Diddy's faster speed, also helping him jump further distances. Both being a similar size not only ceases any issues with hitboxes, but also means that they can carry one another, getting up to higher areas, offering a valuable incentive to keeping both the Kongs alive. Having this perfect symbiosis creates this vastly superior flow to the adventure that makes it feel faster to play through, which is only underpinned by the improved level design. The levels in the first game were simple, go from left to right until you get to the end. That's the way it's always been and that's completely fine. But now, as early as the second stage, you're going left, right, up, down, all over the place. The variety in the level layouts are staggering. And then you go and talk about the game's visuals. Now Donkey Kong Country had DK Island, filled with jungles, caves, temples, mines. It all felt quite grounded. The world design was so coherent, all feeling part of the same location. Now Country 2 starts you on the same ship that you beat King K. Rool on prior. You find yourself running across ports, climbing masts, swimming in the belly of the ships. And that really is just the first world. This isn't any generic, desert world, ice world, fire world that you'd get from your not new or super mario bros. We've got crocodile isle where there are huge volcanic caverns, bright glistening gold mines, moody musky swamps, dazzling disco lights from a theme park and many many more. These locations stand out with just beautiful backgrounds not feeling alike at all. And the best part is, even when they are the same level themes, they are so mechanically different. Take for example the aforementioned theme park stages. These are the equivalent to the minecart levels, which were best known for making me so mad. Difficult? Sure. But not mechanically deep, nor do they need to be. However, now you do a level and it's like, okay, hit some switches to open some gates. Okay, now you've got to beat some other drivers in a race. Okay, now you're in a library being chased by a ghost. The game doesn't allow you to get bored of a mechanic before throwing another one at you. This only ever keeps the experience fresh and engaging, without something becoming gimmicky that takes away from your enjoyment. The closest this game ever comes to gimmicky is with its animal buddies. Now I didn't mention these in the last video because... Well, they're pretty redundant. The more nimble animals were too large to either accurately land jumps or avoid tougher enemies with the more interesting ones mainly relegated to opening up the underwhelming secret areas. 
Now the sequel appears to be following similar groundwork, yet most animals have been replaced. Rambi and Ungard make their return, rightfully so, but Winky the Frog has been succeeded by Rally the Snake, who offers a more defined precision to where you're going to land. And my favourite inclusion is Squitter the Spider, as you can create your own platforms that completely trivialises certain challenges. He is also a spider with shoes, so what more can I really say? The movement of these animals are always in service to the gameplay, instead of an underwhelming, less refined way of navigating through the levels. The biggest divergent to how these animal buddies are handled are in levels like Rattle Battle. You're on this pirate ship, whilst the rendition of King K. Rool's boss music starts playing. You find this barrel, when you jump into it, you actually become Rattly the Rattlesnake and the music just kicks in and it's just amazing. The unfortunate thing about the animal buddies is that you do lose them when you get hit. With these levels, they're designed around the specific abilities that each of the animal buddies have, meaning they haven't got to be built with the regular gameplay loop in mind, offering fewer restrictions in crafting these obstacles. I know it might appear that way, but these really don't come across as gimmicky, as they still conform to the fundamentals of the platforming. So it really doesn't feel contrived. Apart from this boss, Fuck these wasps and everything they stand for. I mean, look at them. They look like they've just come right out of Satan's sack. And why are bees going extinct while these dominatrix-ass bugs just keep roaming around wherever they please? <coughs> that boss, other than just being a nightmare to take down, did prove one thing. The game is very hard. Even more difficult than the first, despite not necessarily feeling that way. DKC hit you with random spikes, life was happy, things seemed nice, and then the game just beats you down with this trial and error horseshit. Preceded by a level, and that wasn't actually that bad. Luckily, now there is a gradual difficulty curve that ramps up at quite a nice pace, so when you do get your soul destroyed by some thankfully not trial and error horseshit, you're ready for it until you get to the final boss. Captain K. Rule is so bloody difficult. I got so angry. So many times I just wanted to throw my controller, but I did it and I felt so satisfied. Except he's not defeated. There is a secret boss fight hidden behind some secret levels that are hidden behind a currency called Creme Coins. So how do you get them? Well, they're hidden behind the bonus stages. Each level has secrets. Now this time it isn't something cryptic that rewards you of just some extra lives. Now it is more than possible to find all of these without using a guide. It's very intuitive to figure out where the secrets are. In this level, for example, there is wind that propels you across the stage. This banana here indicates that there's something nearby and due to the wind mechanic introduced, you can intuit that you won't fall to your death. So this will lead you to a bonus barrel. Each level has a DK coin that you have to find to prove that you're better than whoever the fuck this guy is. And the aforementioned creme coins can be obtained by jumping into these bonus barrels. These will give you a myriad of challenges that truly test your skills. These secrets are so fun to find that I refuse to play through the game without going for 102%. The gameplay loop is just too satisfying and it does absolutely nothing to hurt the pacing. Plus, if you don't do everything, you are quite literally missing out. The extra levels you'll unlock are some of the most brutal tests of my platforming prowess I have ever attempted, especially this level, Animal Antics, where you only play as the animal buddies. The squawk section where there's wind to contend with is especially anger inducing. And then it's off to the final fight with K. Rule. It's a little bit easier than last time, still super difficult, but alas, the day is finally saved with a beautiful sun setting as the three Kongs overlook the island and Cranky Kong finally acknowledges that Diddy is a true hero. Yes, Diddy's number one. Eat a dick mushroom, man. Playing through this venture really made me appreciate the whole Kong clan. Nowadays we only really see Donkey Kong, 
I'd love to see more Diddy, Dixie, Cranky, Funky, hell, even this game's other new inclusions. There's Wrinkly Kong, Cranky's wife, who now saves the game at the school that she teaches at. There are even lives that you can get from Swanky Kong by doing quizzes. I mean, look at him, he's gotta come back. Imagine if Mario Party was hosted by Swanky Kong instead of another stupid toad. I mean, I'd buy it. Do you know what I don't buy? How can a game called Diddy's Kong Quest have a soundtrack this phenomenal? Straight with the opening theme, it seems to encapsulate the swashbuckling adventure whilst having this foreboding bass hinting towards the darker undertones of the game's story. The adventurous pirate theming is enforced in tracks like Jib Jig. You are high above the sky, the music invoking a cheery melody that is highly contrast with the deep, underwater depths that has gone from calming in the previous game to intense, desperate and daring. The Super Nintendo couldn't handle background sound effects and the music at the same time, so they are one in the same, with sound effects baked into the melodies of the songs. There is no better example of this than in Mining Melancholy. The sounds of the tools becoming the main rhythm with these soothing synthesizers. I really, really don't get it. Listen to how epic this sounds. Just, just huff down a chode, Mario. Oh, like, just, like, listen to this, alright? It's good, it's good, I won't deny that. Now listen to this. Seriously, why do I find myself getting choked up talking about a soundtrack of a game where monkeys fight crocodiles? There are just, there are just few words I can say that can truly sell the quality of this soundtrack. But if I had to highlight just one composition, you know which one it would be. Stickerbush Symphony may just be one of the best songs I've ever heard in a game. This has had such an impact that YouTube comments are often littered with people just talking about their biggest fears, hopes, dreams. The tranquil music is just magical. It has this healing quality that makes all of my troubles go away, even if it's just for a few minutes. Regardless of what you might think personally of this music, if something has had such an impact on someone that they feel they can open up about how they truly feel to complete strangers, then it must be something really special. Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest isn't something that I'd call one of the best Super Nintendo games, nor one of the best platformers, but instead one of the best games I have ever played. I didn't grow up with a single Nintendo console, yet I'm excited talking about a game like it was brand new. I may have criticised the first game a lot in this video, but that's because the second literally improved on everything. I'm not even going to keep you in suspense. Play this game, please. It's on the Nintendo Switch Online service, so you can play it quite comfortably. And I have to say, from the bottom of my heart, 
thank you so much for watching. And if you think I've earned it, please subscribe. I'm making so much more content as this is something I genuinely love doing. And hopefully, whatever I do decide to do, won't disappoint. Please don't hesitate to give these old games a chance, as you might just find something truly amazing. I'm going to go now and keep searching for the gold in the old.